Hello, Under Drummer, back again with another helpful how-to video. Today I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Winfellow Amiga emulator. I posted a video some years ago about how to load the game Fantasy 3 using Winfellow and got quite a lot of response, so I thought I'd do a follow-up video. Uh, it got a lot of comments as well, and some of the comments were people asking for further details. I thought I'd cover just some general tips cover the keyboard mapping, how to change the, some of the keyboard controls, and how to swap discs. Goblins is a good example to show you how to change discs. So the first thing we need to do is open our Winfellow emulator. I'm using uh, Winfellow Alpha version 0.4.4 build 3-965 if that helps you at all. Hopefully you've already got the Winfellow ROMs and the discs and everything that you need to start your Winfellow and to play the games, the Kickstart ROMs. If you don't, I suggest going back and watching my first video about Fantasy 3 and then coming back and finishing this video. So I'm going to assume you already have all that done and we're going to start Winfellow. Alright, so I guess what we should start with is some general tips first. One of the things that I find that makes this Winfellow a lot easier to use is if you save your configurations. So you'll see right now I have DuckTales, the quest for gold, loaded here in floppy disk zero, into disk drive zero. So then you come down here to configuration and you've got all kinds of stuff to mess with. But let's say that for the game port, I just want to use the mouse. So game port one, I set to mouse. Game port 2 I set to none. And then I hit OK and I like my settings. I need to come up here File, Save Configuration As, and for some reason Winfellow will not always take you to the proper folder, so make sure in your Amiga games that you are in the proper folder for the configuration you're saving. I'm going to save the configuration for DuckTales, so I want to be in the DuckTales folder. And the configuration file will be saved as a .wfc. So therefore, hit save. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it here. And your DuckTales configuration will be saved. Now, if I change disks, eject, and then put in something else. Let's put in goblins, disk one. Now, if I exit, and then bring Winfellow back up, you'll see DuckTales is back in there, because Winfellow always defaults to the last successful configuration that you had. I have all kinds of different configurations saved, which makes this whole process a lot easier, especially if you're swapping multiple disks. So let's go File, Open Configuration, and then navigate to where your Goblins game is. Disk 1. Okay, so we're going to put Goblins Disk 1 into disk drive zero. Scroll over with your key and make sure it says goblins disk one. And then in floppy disk drive one we're going to hit these three little dots here and put goblins disk two in there. And then in floppy drive two we are going to put goblins disk three. Now we have all three disks. Now we're going to go to configuration and game port. I think the best thing to play this to play goblins with is mouse. So we're going to keep it on mouse. And then you can go ahead and mess with some of your other savings if you choose to. And then we're going to what? Save configuration. And we're going to save it in DuckTales? No. We're going to save it in goblins. Now when we exit out of Winfellow, bring it up, it defaults to the last known configuration, which was saved as goblins config. So if you mess around with some other stuff you can just go open configuration and bring goblins config back in. Alright so let's start the emulation and I will show you how to swap disks. It's very easy in this emulator. Some emulators it's kind of tricky. I have a Commodore 64 emulator where disk swapping is you actually need to go to school for two years to figure out how to do it. Start emulation. Another general tip by the by, up here in the top left corner, if you don't see at least four green dashes, then 
Winfellow is not operating successfully and you need to hit F11 to exit back to your desktop or the Windows key works. But if you hit F11, you can exit. I'll show it to you real quick. F11 takes you to the emulator and then you can hit quit emulation or go file exit. Either of those work. Otherwise, exiting any other way will just put Winfellow down here in your taskbar. Also, if you just want to hit F11 to get back to your desktop, start emulation is now the same as resume emulation since you've already got it loaded. So the first thing we do is pick our language. Be sure to use the number pad. We see the four dots, four lines up there in the top left corner. That means Winfellow is working. Otherwise, you got a black screen. You just sit here forever. Nothing will happen. And that does occasionally occur. You notice there was three sets of four lines, and that's because we have three virtual disks in, and it recognized all three virtual disks. So this can take a little bit sometimes, depending on the game. There it is. It took forever. Not sure if you can hear that sound but pretty sure that's not how the game is supposed to be. It's really sped up and annoying. The escape key is your friend here. Goblins with three eyes. Oh, those are supposed to be the goblins. I get it. <laughs> I literally just got that. This is sort of like a Lost Vikings type game if you've never seen it or heard about it. Ah, DRM. It's been around for as long as video games themselves have been around. So it says it was cracked by crystal. That's nice. All we have to do is press return. We don't have to fiddle-faddle with it at all. That doesn't look healthy. Is that supposed to happen? Okay. Now we're just presented with disc two. This is the first trial in the game. <laughs> this is the first level. So... How do we back out of here? Well, like I said, you can hit the Windows key, but it will just minimize Winfellow into the taskbar, and then when you click on it, it will bring you back to this screen. Or you can hit the F11 if you've been paying attention. Good old F11 brought us back here, where we need to load disk 2, and we loaded disk 2 into floppy disk drive 1. And now we just say into floppy disk drive 0. Just want to click this and then start emulation. That's just like putting in disk 2, though we haven't removed disk 1 technically. Though back in the old days, you would have to remove disk 1 and put in disk 2. You can see up there there's two disks. I don't remember if we have to hit enter here, so I'm just going to wait. It's best not to hit any keys if you can help it, though after waiting for three to four minutes sometimes where nothing's going on and those bars are present up there I can understand the temptation to just start jamming on keys okay in this instance I did have to hit spacebar I believe or it could have just been coincidental when I finally hit the spacebar that it switched from disk 2 to loading and there's goblins yay Go over here. Do stuff. Okay, so that's disk swapping. And now we're going to try messing around with the key mapping. Now, I've had a couple people write and say, how do I change the keys? And I went and did a little bit of research on it, and it appears there is a mapping.key file. Um, Locating it, however, is a whole other story. So you need to look in App Data Roaming Winfellow. That's Users, Your Name, App Data Roaming Winfellow. You'll see the mapping.key in there. I suggest right clicking, making a copy, pasting it on your desktop, titling it Backup, and messing around with this file as much as you like. 
So you can see here, the keys are all assigned, Q equals Q, W equals W, but sometimes, because the Amiga keyboard was a different layout than the standard keyboard today, certain keys are different. Numpad left bracket is F11, numpad left bracket is F12. I have never used a joystick for the Winfellow emulator, so the first thing I did, I kept my mapping.key backup as I mentioned before, but in the, in the edited version, I just deleted all these joy key settings. I had no need for them. You, you may be different, you might want to keep those in there. Uh, just a real quick note, the O and the P keys on your keyboard are set to auto fire for your joysticks. So even if a joystick is not plugged in, or in the Winfellow configuration in game port, you don't even have it set to joy key. If you press O or P on the keyboard, it will act like you're pressing the enter button a lot, or the fire button a lot. It's, it goes into immediate auto fire. So try to stay away from O and P. Now, how are you supposed to stay away from O and P? The keys O and P when you are trying to play a text game, or maybe you need those keys to, to do other controls. Well, go ahead and just delete this entire setting here of joysticks. If you're not going to use any of the joysticks, maybe keep multiple mapping key files. Or you just come in here and write grave on both these. And that means basically null, I guess. So let's test this here live so you can see how it works. So I just copy my edited version and paste it in here. And then of course you've got to rename it so that it's mapping.key because that's what the emulator will look for. You can see I've completely removed the joystick settings at the end. And just to showcase how this works, I've these are the arrow keys, up, left, down, right. I've used down for up and up for down. So when we press up on our arrow keys, we should get a down movement. So I like to refresh this app data window here before we load the emulator. And let's open our DuckTales Quest for Gold configuration. Just real quick, come in here, make sure this is set to mouse. It should be okay, and then we can start emulation. We've got our four little lines up there. A lot of times you'll get a cracked screen. Escape can get you out of this, usually, or spacebar or enter. In this case, it's the mouse left click, mouse key, that also works. Spacebar here. Down is still moving down, even though our mapping.key file is set for it to move up when I hit the down key. Now, I think the problem is we have the emulator open when we edited the mapping.key. So we're going to refresh in here again, make sure that up is set to down and down is set to up. So make sure you exit out of Winfellow completely before you edit your mapping.key file and then refresh the window with the mapping.key file in it and then load Winfellow again. Here we are, choose difficulty. Now it's working. So you can see I'm pressing, well you can't see, but you just have to believe me. I'm pressing up on the keyboard and I'm getting a down movement. So the mapping.key file is doing what it's supposed to be doing. The arrow keys are affected by the up, down, left, right settings in the mapping.key file. The number pad keys, however, are not affected. I'm pressing the number 8 key, which is up on the number pad, and it is going up. So just the left, right, up, down arrow keys are affected. Now with this game, as I said, you'll have to finagle with it a bit. With DuckTales, Quest for Gold, even though I've got it set as mouse, the mouse has done nothing for me so far, except get me off the crack screen with a left click. So if you've got the game set to keyboard settings in game port, in configuration, perhaps that's messing up the game. Set it to mouse, and the keyboard somehow works.
counterintuitive, yes. Not very user friendly, yes, but what do you expect for free is all I can say. It's nice that we get to play these old games again. So, I'm going to mess around with DuckTales for a little bit here. This is Gyro Gear Loose's Super Anti Spy Security System. Ah, more DRM. Berry Berry Basin. Okay, we've got to select fly there. Let's fly there. Let's fly to Berry Berry Basin. Take me there, launch pad. Ready to hit the skies, Mr. McGee. Let's go. Oh, the alt key started me. Oh. And now I'm flying backwards or upside down. Oh, geez, it took two days to load the game. A famous explorer once said that coconuts were for the birds. Both send you flying off a branch. Coconuts? Oh, if you're trying to get the coconuts. And how do birds send you flying off a branch? Space bar. The mouse does nothing here. But the controls are actually pretty responsive. Oh, as I fall. It'll take two days to repair him. Everything takes two days. Oh, that was uh, one of the guys, the green guy. Now I got the blue guy. Space bar is jump. I'm terrible at this game. Anyways, that should clear up some of the questions about using Windfellow. You know how to do some key mapping now and how to correctly change disks. If this helped you, please leave me a like and uh, leave me some comments. I'm interested to know uh, how the Winfellow emulator is working for you and what games you're playing. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.